Hello friends and welcome to my February favorites where I share with you all my favorite beauty products, skincare products and makeup products that I have finished in the month of February. Let me tell you there are some great ones here this month especially one product that I cannot stop raving about that I will share with you in the end so look out for that. And let's get started because there's a lot of product to get through. First off is the Thank You Body Wash, the refreshing and life-changing in Botanical Mint and Spring Flowers Body Wash. This is a one liter bottle and it took me a fair while to get through it. Not because I don't use it often in the shower, but just because a little goes a long way. This has a beautifully clean minty scent given to it by the peppermint oil that's in it. This scent is not too overwhelming at all. It just gives you a really nice invigorating refreshed feeling in the shower. Be careful though I've learned from experience not to use this in your groin area shall we say. It does tingle a little bit so watch out for that but if you want a body wash that lathers not too much just enough though to make it feel sudsy and just nice on your body as you're washing then this is it this is a very clean product australian made paraben free cruelty free and has no harsh detergent in it i would repurchase this because there are some beautiful scents in the range however i am currently using and finishing off the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. Now, this is a very mild cleanser. It doesn't suds as much as this. In fact, this doesn't suds at all. You can use this on your body and on your face. And in fact, if you want just a quick makeup remover in the shower, then this does the job and you can use it on the rest of the body and it doesn't create any irritation whatsoever. Next, I finished a jar of the Hyun Kang Yule. It's a Korean brand and it's a really beautiful, nutritious, hydrating cream. This has a very delicate scent. Sweet, but not too overwhelming. Anyway, I love scents, so this is just beautiful. It just has a very floral scent and the cream when you apply it on your skin just feels really smooth, luscious, and it just leaves your skin feeling really hydrated and moisturized. You can wear this AM and the PM, and I use it both just because I wanted to get through the jar. And I found that it played well with all my serums at night, and it also played well with any makeup that I applied afterwards in the morning. And in fact, it even played well with my sunscreen uh, at the time that I was using or any of the sunscreens that I've used during this period that I applied after this, I had no problems with it. This is a very hydrating cream that doesn't leave your skin feeling oily or sticky. And when I was doing research about this brand and this product, I found out that they don't use purified water, which is a filler product that a lot of other creams do use. The base product for this cream is astragalus extract. I don't know what that is. I should look it up before I tell you. Let me look that up first. So astragalus, apparently it can be added to formulation for personal care products such as skin lightening products, soothing lotions, acne treatments, and other types of products. So it has an anti-inflammatory and antibacterial property. And apparently it's been shown to possibly be effective for skin lightening, but I didn't use it for that. I found that this helped with the dullness of my skin and it helped in just giving it a nice youthful look, which is what I was after. And I like this product. I'll probably won't be replenishing it again because one, I like to try new things, but two, I'm currently using two other products. In the morning, I'm using the Eat Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream. This is good for all skin types and it's a super moisturizing cream. I found that this plays well with my makeup in the morning. I haven't had any problems with it, but I'm finishing it off and I'm about halfway through, almost two thirds of the way through. I use that in the AM and then at night, I'm using the MAC Hyper Real Skin Canvas Balm. This is a beautiful cream. It's very lightly scented, not heavy scented at all. It just goes on beautifully and it does make my skin feel really hydrated in the morning. So these are the two products that I've replaced for the Hyun Kang Yule. I finished a travel size of the Laboratories for Lorga Paris Meso Mask. This mask is beautiful if you have dry, dull skin and need a little bit of brightening and a bit of a booster. It's suitable for all skin types and it's rich in hyaluronic acid, which is a really plumping serum. This has a smooth, rich cream texture, but it just dissolves into the skin. And you're only supposed to leave it on for 15 to 30 minutes, but I find that 
when I'm wearing a mask, I just, provided it's not a clay mask or a mud mask, I generally put it on at night and just sleep with it on. I didn't find that this caused any clogging of the pores or didn't inflame my skin. I didn't wake up in the morning with um, just any clogged pores. I found that I'd wake up in the morning uh, really with plump skin and just feeling rejuvenated. Of course, if you want to wear it just before you go out, you can just put on a face mask for about 15 to 30 minutes, wipe it off, put on your moisturizer and your fan foundation or any makeup that you apply will be sitting on a really plump base. This is really good as a pick-me-up mask if your skin is feeling a little bit dull and dry. In its place, I am currently using the Grown Alchemist Age Repair Sleep Mask. This is a nice rich mask with a beautiful herbal scent. It goes on really thick, depending on how thick you apply it. I tend to put it on really thick and let it sink into my skin and then I wipe the excess off before I go to sleep, otherwise it goes all over my pillow. I find that this is really good, really hydrating and perfect if you want a bit of a pick-me-up for your skin for the following morning. Now, I'm really proud of myself because I finally finished the Coty Air Spun Loose Face Powder. This is a iconic face powder. I think even Tati uses it. It's one of her favorites. And I've had it for a couple of years and I don't find that powder goes off. So I've kept using it. It does have a lovely scent to it. It's actually quite floral. So if you don't like scent in your makeup, then probably steer clear of this because it does have quite a strong uh, scent to it. However, it does dissipate um, after a while and you don't really smell it. Now, I love scents, so I'm quite happy to use these products. But if you're allergic to scents or your strong scents irritate you, then probably stay clear of this one. Although it is very good at mitigating any oiliness in the skin and mattifying areas of the skin that you don't want to be pronounced and showing things like um, enlarged pores or fine lines. This is really good at disguising it. I just apply a little bit just in this area here just to set any under eye concealer that I have over the T-zone to disguise any oiliness or any enlarged pores. And then basically just a little bit goes a long way with this and I've used it, I like it. Will I be replenishing it and rebuying it? No, I probably won't. What I'm using at the moment is Co Gen Do setting powder. I love this powder. It is very finely milled and it has a hint of pinkness to it. So it counteracts any purple I find that I have underneath my eyes. And it's what I'm wearing today. And I find that a little bit goes a really long way. I've had this for about six months now it's not cheap so I use it sparingly and I find that it does a really good job of minimizing any enlarged pores any oiliness but it still leaves my skin able to shine through any powder and any makeup I wear, I wear it very lightly and I just love the way it plays with the rest of the makeup the way it sets my makeup and the way it hides any fine lines and the appearance of any imperfections of the skin so this is really good recently when I was at TK Maxx in fact late last year I found a new brand to me Mary and May and I bought a few items from them specifically this hyaluronic serum which I really love it comes in a glass jar with, with a glass eyedropper and I have used this. My skin loves this. The thing that I like about the Mary and May product is that they're made with clean products. So there's no uh, irritating ingredients in it. I really love the Hyaluronic Serum because it's not a sticky serum. It's quite liquidy and watery, but it's got a little bit of a gel-like consistency. So it's not runny like water, but it's not oily like oil. It's just got a little bit of extra consistency to it that glides onto the skin and my skin just laps it up. So if you've got dull, dry skin, give this a go because it's got very clean products. It's very easy to use. It plays well with all my other serums without causing any breakouts, any irritations. And yes, I love it so much. I've actually purchased a second bottle and I'm happy to say they can actually not only just buy it at TK Maxx whenever they have it, you can actually buy it at various sites on the internet. So I really am happy with this. I will continue to purchase it. And in fact, I'm onto my second bottle of this. Something that I've used that I'm still not sure that I will go back to is the Revolution Skincare London Mattifying Niacinamide 
serum. Niacinamide is a type of vitamin B3, which when applied to the skin can help build keratin. That can keep your skin firm and healthy, and it helps with minimizing pores, fine lines, and boost moisture retention. I had no negative effects from using this product, but I won't be buying it again. What I'm trying to do with my skincare at the moment is just move away from using multiple different serums and just go for something that's clean, but that can provide everything I need in one or two products combined. However, having said that, I'm not going to throw all my products away. I am slowly going to be using them all up. I am trying to move away to something a little bit more clean and not have so many steps in my beauty routine. Okay, so this is a product that I've been hearing on social media. Apparently, it's a super potent product. If you have loose circles under your eyes, if you have puffy eyes, then this product apparently was supposed to just be the bee's knees and just remove all those symptoms um, that you might be experiencing. It's the Sunday Riley Autocorrect Brightening and Depuffing Eye Contour Cream. This is not cheap. So when a product is not cheap, I tend to have high hopes for it. Now, it wasn't bad. It was actually very good. It has a lovely scent to it, not overwhelming at all. Let me see if there's any left. It has a very faint scent. It does get absorbed beautifully by the eye area and it did feel moisturizing. Did it remove the puffiness and remove my blue circles around my eyes? I don't feel that it did this any better than a more economical product than this. For what this costs, I would have expected to see immediate results. My eyes are still puffy when I wake up in the morning and it does take a little while for the puffiness to go away. However, at the time, I also was eating different foods to what I'm eating now. I'm taking better care of the foods that I'm eating at the moment. And so I don't wake up as often with really puffy eyes and blue circles around my eyes. So I can't say that this really did anything. I think just a change in diet helped with that. I feel like any other cream with caffeine in it would work just as well. In fact, my ordinary caffeine solution works just as well at depuffing my eyes, uh, my eye area in the morning. Yeah, so probably not a big fan of this, save your money. If you're like me, you find it very hard to finish perfume. I have a stash there and I have a stash there behind me that you can't see. And I like to rotate my perfumes, but I love that feeling of actually finishing a perfume because it's like, a bit of a pat on the back that I'll take any time um, to tell me that, yes, I do, one, like a perfume, but two, I've used it enough to be able to finish it. And one of these perfumes was gifted to me by a really good friend of mine. It's the SJP NYC perfume. It came in a gift pack. Admittedly, I've only finished the travel component of it. I do have the bigger bottle underneath there that I'll get to. I'm thinking that maybe... I can unscrew this part and then just fill it up again with some more perfume. That way I can finish some more of it without constantly opening up the big bottle and also have some more in this carrier bottle. Anyway, enough of that. What I want to say about this perfume is if you like a floral but sweet perfume with a bit of citrus, then you're going to love this perfume. It's got top notes of mandarin. Heart notes of gardenia, honeysuckle, medusa, and rose, and bottom notes of vanilla, sandalwood, and creamy musk. This is a beautiful scent. Absolutely love it. And I will continue using it, but I'm giving myself a pat on the back for having finished this shower size bottle. Now we come to the winning product for the last six months. Now, if you're like me and you're trying to move away from using products that have aluminium or that have heaps of additives and you're currently using Rexona or Dove, which is what I used to use, then you might be interested in trying a natural deodorant. I got this Mugu underarm deodorant in a sample pack or a gift pack of some sort and I was skeptical. In fact, it sat in my backup drawer for quite some time before I finally decided to give it a go. Now, I've been finding that the Rexona and the Dove, even the black and white cans, the ones that aren't supposed to mark your underarms, I found that they were giving me problems on my shirt. And also, at the end of the day, I couldn't reuse the tops. Okay, I don't often do it, but if I can get away with a second day wear out of a top, I will do it. I hate having to wash that iron sometimes. So if I get away with using something or wearing a top twice, then by all means, I will do it. 
And Rexona and Dove were just not doing it for me anymore. I used to, even on like semi-warm days, you know, when sometimes you get into a warm room and you start perspiring, or if you're at that age where you start getting hot flushes, Rexona just wasn't doing it for me anymore. I would end up by the end of the day just having a bit of a scent and thinking, oh, my goodness, that's me. Anyway, so I decided to give this a go, not actually giving it a high hopes. I was a bit skeptical about using natural products. I thought, how effective can they be? Let me tell you, this is the best product that I have used in a long time. It's made from 99.5% natural ingredients. The other 0.5% non-natural is the paroctone olamine to stop mold from growing. So this is a beautiful underarm deodorant. It's a roll-on, not a spray. And it has a beautiful hint of lemon myrtle in it. And I absolutely love it. As I said, I can use this in the morning, just roll it under my arms, let it dry because it is a little bit tacky when you first put it on. But once it dries, it does not rub off onto your clothes. And I'm good to go. I can exercise. I can go for a run and I don't have that smell about me after a run. At the end of the day, I can just leave my clothes to air a little bit and then put them in my wardrobe and I can actually use them a couple of days later or even a day later and my clothes don't smell. So I absolutely love this. So much so that I've bought a backup and I am currently using the Lemon Myrtle Moo Goo Natural Fresh Cream Deodorant and I absolutely love it. The scent of this one is a little bit stronger than the original one that I had, but nonetheless, I love a scent, so I'm good with that. So tell me, what are some of the products that you've discovered this month that you'd love to share with me in the comments below so that I can share with the rest of our community in an upcoming video if I do use it? I hope wherever you are, you're having a fabulous day. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye.